Jesus. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Come on. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on. Bless the name of the Lord. To our presiding bishop, distinguished members of the general board, our general supervisor of women, I'm thankful to God for my jurisdictional leaders, Bishop Quillen, Mother Badan, for my pastor and local church family, for the extended families that I have in the states of Louisiana and Mississippi. I praise God for my family, my wife, my mother in love who are here with us today, and for my son who's somewhere near the drums. I'm grateful to God for this opportunity to stand before you, the people of the Lord, in the greatest church in the world, the church of God in Christ. Is anybody that's glad that you're in this church today? Well, let me come a little more plainly. Is there anybody here today that's glad that you're saved, that you're sanctified, that you're filled with the Holy Ghost? Well, come on, put your hands together like you're really glad about it. Will you open your Bible and go with us to the book of Exodus, chapter 24 and verse 3. And the word of the Lord reads thusly. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice. Everybody say one voice. And said all the words which the Lord hath said will we do. I want to talk to you this afternoon briefly from this thought. Responding to the call of an extreme commitment. Believers of the Most High God, it is not by accident that God has afforded us the privilege to come together from the everywhere. For we have come by the divine providence and provision of God. He has afforded us this privilege that we might witness and partake in a divine encounter governed by his presence and glory to empower, to encourage, and to strengthen us for the various assignments entrusted in our hands. Those of us who truly know him can celebrate the fact that if he never does anything else for us, he's done enough for us to praise him the balance of our days. Realizing this truth should compel us to thank him for where we are and praise him with expectant faith for the predestined place prepared for our future. As we have come to this place, we do so reflecting upon the sacrificial gift of one solitary life that was offered to give us the benefit of having life and that life more abundantly. And it is that sacrifice which has called upon us to respond in heartfelt commitment by standing as vessels meet for the master's use to bring glory and honor to his name. The scriptural text which claims our attention denotes the unified response of God's people after hearing what God had to say. The full measure of God's expectations given in chapter 23 present to us the tenets of God's covenant with them. And such a sacred covenant typifies the covenant of grace between God and believers through Christ. However, here Moses stood as the leader of the people and with a clarion voice said what thus saith the Lord. And the people, God's people, responded with a unified voice hallelujah all that the Lord has commanded will we do and so it is today that when God's chosen 
God's anointed, God's justified, and God's favored and appointed leader speaks. Those who truly love God will respond in a spirit of humility and say, all that the Lord has commanded, we will do. The measure of their extreme commitment was manifested in their obedience because God required them to demonstrate an understanding that even though they were in a land filled with corruption, they were to commit themselves to God, denying any covenants with the false gods of the land. For he says, thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. So it is, they offered a united response to the call of an extreme commitment by expressing a willingness to live in complete submission to God in a place where the society's order was completely contrary to the will of the one true and living God. Even in today's times, when the new world order has taken God's thou shalt not and made them to be do what you will of me, we are compelled to live a life that is committed to God in true holiness, unspotted from the world. And Paul passionately urges us to do so in Romans 12 and 1. For he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Through these words, Paul admonishes us as ambassadors of a holy kingdom to stand as the living dead. For we, as living sacrifices, must be alive in Christ and dead to the things of the world. Therefore, we must live by mortifying the members of the flesh, pulling off the things of the world and putting on the newness of life. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, committing to the will of God, mandates that we answer the voice of God's charge upon our life. In spite of the challenges that confront us, we must answer. Regardless of the measures of persecution, we must answer. Even if in seasons we have to stand by ourselves, we must answer. Sunday school gave us witnesses that had to ex answer the call of an extreme commitment even when they were faced with their greatest challenges i want to submit to you today esther when she faced the decision of standing in the gap for the salvation of a people stood and responded if i perish let me perish. I want to ask you today, what is your final answer? The three Hebrew boys had to make a conscious decision to bow or not bow, even though they could have chosen to compromise because it would have been convenient to do so. They stood in defiance of an earthly king with an extreme commitment and said, our God is able to deliver us out of your hand. Hallelujah. What is your final answer? Mary, the mother of Jesus, faced with the challenge of bringing forth the Savior of the world, predestined and selected by the hand of God had to come to grips with her own personal inhibitions. And when she thought about it, she responded 
rejoice in God my Savior because he has done unto me that which is mine and great is his name Jesus can everybody shout Jesus when he entered the garden of Gethsemane faced with the heaviness of the task that was set before him the bitterness of the cup the sacrificial death on the cross when he thought about what he was about to do he responded with an extreme commitment when he said nevertheless not my will but your will be done is there anybody in here today that's willing to make an extreme commitment hallelujah what is your final answer well when I thought about the fact of those who went on before even in the word of God I had to remember our founder for he walked down the streets of Arkansas when all he wanted to do was teach holiness and without which no man could see the Lord he heard the voice of God say that if you take the name Church of God in Christ there will never be a building large enough to hold the people so what did he answer he said yes Lord he taught the saints to say yes Lord I wonder in this house is there anybody that's got another yes Lord devil you are a liar I want to let you know that right where you are in the midst of what you're going through God is still able if you will commit yourself so I ask you today what is your final answer your final answer if you are willing to respond would be yes Lord anybody got a yes Lord come on shout it out yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord 